Oh geez, what did I get myself into this time, folks? As you can tell, I've got a load of Game Boy Colors here. Um, I actually have all of the colors. Here is the missing one, the teal one. This one is bagged up, and I'll explain it shortly why it's disassembled and bagged up. For some reason, the Game Boy Color is one of those systems that I always wanted to have, just like an original Game Boy, and I'm sure I'll tell you the whole video game story from my youth another time, but the Game Boy Color, I always wanted one. They're really cheap on eBay now. Like each one of these, I think I paid 10 to 15 bucks for, and all of these work. I figure, you know, there's five primary colors that this came in. It would look kind of cool if I had one of each. And then I got to thinking after I collected all of them, well, what in the hell am I gonna do with five different colored Game Boy Colors? I don't really like playing the console all that much because the screen sucks. Yeah, I could do the front light mod on all of these, but that's a pain in the butt. And you know what, I'm kind of done modding consoles for a little while. After that whole Game Boy Advance backlit screen fiasco, I'm, I'm kind of done with that. So I figured, you know what, it's time for a little bit of arts and crafts. I'm going to start taking these all apart, and that's why this one's bagged up. This guy was really, really yucky. Um, it looks like somebody had spilled a can of soda in it or something, because I actually had to kind of pry it apart after taking all the screws out. But I've got this one completely disassembled. This teal one actually does not work. Um, it does not power on. I'm not surprised it doesn't power on if it got a good soaking by soda they didn't say why it didn't work in the auction they just said it didn't work so one of these fuses is dead i don't have that size of fuse handy and to be honest if this is just going to be part of an art project there's really no point in fixing this one up just yet if i ever want to play this teal one i'll fix it but not right now so one of the other things that you're going to need to do this cool art project of five color game boys is a shadow box. Uh, this one is not specifically listed as being a shadow box, but it's a deep picture frame. You really just need a picture frame that's at least one inch deep between the glass on the front and that big piece of card or whatever in the back. I'm going to line the back with a piece of really nice black paper. I think this is going to give some really nice contrast so that you'll have the color Game Boys sitting you know, right on top, and it'll really accentuate the color of the Game Boy. Now, if you've never taken apart a Game Boy Color before, it's actually very easy and straightforward. This green one is in pretty much perfect condition and is very clean. I'm not gonna bother taking this one apart, so I'm just gonna set that aside. There are six screws on here. Two of them are hiding underneath the battery compartment. All six on the back are tri-wing screws, so you're gonna need your special little tri-wing driver. The board itself is only held in with three screws. These are Phillips, thankfully, here, here, and here. The last thing we need to do before we can hinge the motherboard out is to disconnect the display ribbon cable. And you simply use your fingernails to pull up on the bail, slide it towards the top of the Game Boy. It'll come out a little bit and then stop. Then very gently wiggle out that display ribbon cable. Just like that. All of your plastic bits now just lift out. The rubber membranes, the D-pad and the buttons. Now we need to get the display out because I'm just going to soak this whole front panel and everything to clean it up real well. Easiest way to do that is with a spudger. You're going to want to use the flat side. If you pull up on the ribbon cable just a little bit, you'll notice that there's a notch. This is actually very similar to with the Game Boy Advance, how we kind of leverage that screen out, that old one. You just gently pry, and it's gonna make these kind of nasty cracking sounds like that. That's just the adhesive. You'll see the display comes up, and here is the rest of the housing. And of course, the plastic screen cover stays on the housing like that. I find the easiest way to soak and clean up all of these plastic case parts is in the bathroom. So. I'm going to just plug the drain here and start some water going. I'm going to use a little bit of warm water because that seems to help loosen things up a little bit better. And while that's filling, I'm just going to take some regular hand soap. It seems to do just as good of a job cleaning up as anything else, but it's not very harsh. As long as you're not soaking these for hours and hours, any sort of adhesive won't really let go. 
Um, so the, the, the lens on the front here is held on with adhesive. I've never had one of these fall off. Likewise, a lot of the labels and stuff on the back, like purely paper labels will have problems, but these are kind of a plastic label. I'm not really worried about them either. And any metal parts, again, unless you're soaking this for a very long time, you don't really have to worry about corrosion or anything because they're not gonna corrode that fast. I mean, you're gonna be drying this out as soon as you're done washing it. So in you go. What am I going to use to actually get all the schmutz off of these plastic parts? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm using a toothbrush. No, this is not my toothbrush. Well, it is my toothbrush because I bought it with my money, but no, I don't use this on my teeth. This is a very inexpensive toothbrush that I bought from Target. I got it as part of a four pack for, I'd like to say, three bucks. It's got nice soft bristles. It works really well on cleaning stuff off of case plastics without risk of scratching it. Rub dub dub. Don't forget the battery door. All right, so since it's such a nice day outside and the fact that I don't want to get spray adhesive all over the inside of the house, we're going to do this on the patio table. All we need to do is get this picture frame disassembled to start. The things I'm not going to need as part of this, either this mat or this white sheet with all the stupid people in sandcastles and crap. <clears throat> so we're going to be gluing this to this. So this is the back facing out towards the wall. This is the good side facing in towards the glass. We're going to glue them back to back. Shake up the spray adhesive here, and this is just regular all-purpose spray adhesive, nothing fancy. The reason why I'm doing this outside is because aerosol things go everywhere. And I'm already feeling the adhesive like on the hair on my arm. It's weird. Now what seems to work best? Oh yeah, both. I'm gonna have to wash my arms to get all this glue off. It's freaking weird. I don't know how to describe it. It feels almost like, kind of like your arms are a little electric. With all the, the hairs kind of sticking together and then separating as you move around. Trippy. Anyway, so that side is sprayed. I'm gonna spray this side now. You don't need to go too insane with this, but now that I've quite thoroughly glued myself and both of these pieces. You want to do both sides because then you get the best tack. Depending on the spray adhesive, sometimes you want to let them sit for a little bit to tack up. This one gets tacky pretty quickly. So now I'm just gonna like that. Then we take our newly covered in glue utility knife and we can just trim this all down. So now we've got the board lined with black for on the inside. Okay, so we've gotten all these Game Boys taken apart, cleaned up. I've just got them sitting on paper towels here in the windowsill to dry. Generally it takes a while to air dry all these parts, especially with all the, uh, the nooks and crannies within the casing bits, you know, especially in the, uh, the speaker holes here. The one thing that I wasn't able to clean was the faceplate for this yellow one. You'll notice the screen is still in here. The reason for that is because as I was trying to pry the screen out, it was actually starting to come apart, such that the back kind of metal plate that this foam is attached to was peeling off, but the actual liquid crystal part was staying on the front. I had a feeling that if I goofed with that, it would end up just breaking the display and I didn't really want to break the display. But again, since this one's really just going to be part of an art project, I don't care too much. I'm just going to clean it up as best I can, throw them all back together here, and then move onwards.
Now, where we go from here is going to vary greatly depending on the particular picture frame that you bought. Mine is just barely deep enough to fit the Game Boy Colors. If you get a shadow box that's deeper, you're going to have to come up with your own way to mount the Game Boys inside it. I was planning on getting a deeper shadow box, and what I figured out would be the best way to do it would be to drill holes behind where each of the Game Boys would mount. That would be precisely the same distance apart as these two holes. Take these two screws out and then simply screw the Game Boy in from behind through the holes in the board that you drilled into these two holes. All I have to do is simply sandwich the Game Boys inside here because it's going to be a tight enough fit that friction will be enough to hold the Game Boys in. So teal is going to be on the end here. Now the careful part is we just drop the back in here without disturbing the order of the Game Boys. So there you have it, our quick little Game Boy Color art project. This project can be very scalable. You don't have to do exactly what I did. In fact, I've seen shadow boxes of all sorts of dimensions, even as small as just, you know, one foot by one foot. It'd be great for holding just one or two handhelds, or maybe put your game gear in there, or whatever. Think outside the box. This video is just to give you some ideas as to what you can do with old hardware that you don't play anymore, but you don't want to get rid of, maybe for sentimental reasons, or because you may want to play it again someday, just not now. Don't hide it. Show it off. This is really cool hardware, and its designers put a lot of effort into not only having it play well, but having it look good. So you might as well turn it into functional art if you're going to do anything with it. So here's the spiel I normally say. If you like this video, please give me the thumbs up. I do appreciate it and it helps the channel out quite a bit. If you want to see more videos, please hit the subscribe button. It's right down there. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.